Grand Rising, how are you guys doing? I hope that you guys are having a great Tuesday morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on wherever you are located in the world. Oh, wow. I just want to talk to my people, my Israelite brothers and sisters. I want to talk to you. Those of you who know you're Israel, and those of you who are not yet aware that you're Israel. You know, I've heard the argument. There are definitely a lot of arguments going on about this new Israelite Hebrew awakening, which really isn't new. It's just broadened out and broadcasted more now because now is the time and now is the season of awakening for the people who are Israel to know Hey, wake up out of your slumber because you are my people. And there are a lot of people that ask the question, what is it? So what if you're Israel? If you're the true Israelites, does that mean that you're automatically saved just because you know you're the Israelites? Of course not. No, that's that is not the reason that the Most High is awakening his people so that they may know that they are his. The Most High is awakening Israel. He's awakening his people because, yes, it's time, but no, it doesn't automatically save you just because you find out you're Israel. It It places you in a mindset of knowing who you are, knowing your identity. It does something to someone to know, hey, you know what? I'm not just descendants of slaves. No, I'm not just an African-American subject to all types of racism and racial profiling and systemic racism at will and on demand in this country. No, I'm actually the chosen of the most high. You need to go back. If you don't understand what being the chosen people of Israel is, go back and read the word. And every place in the word talks about Israel. Excuse me. That's you. That's me. That's our people, our children, our grandchildren, our relatives, our parents, our grandparents, our ancestors. That's us. And that that is when you realize that and you and you sit down and you let that marinate in your in your ruach. Hey, that promise was for us first to the Jew and also to the Gentile. This allows a people who have historically, systemically, and traditionally been downtrodden as a people for as long as they can remember that, hey, we're not what the Caucasian and the European and the white people said we were and treated us. We're not that. We're actually Yah's chosen people. And it does something. It builds your faith. Huh? It builds your faith to know that, hey, when you look back in in light of the scripture, you find out what your rights are. Huh? When you go back in that word and you read it and and you fully comprehend and understand what your rights are as Israel. Hmm? Your birthright, which is not salvation, but you got other birthrights. We have other birthrights that were stolen from us. It makes you hold your head up just a little bit high. No, it's not black supremacy. Come on, stop that. Just stop. It's not black supremacy. It's not reverse racism. There is no such thing. Please stop. Please stop. Okay, just stop. It's it's a matter of identity. When someone goes into the ER 
and they've suffered a head trauma that's caused amnesia. What is the, the treatment plan for patients of an amnesia? The treatment plan, of course, you know, make sure that everything physically is okay, but they may not gain their memory back for a while. And then everybody that's around that person, that loves that person and knew that person before they lost their memory, their agenda becomes to help that person, to jog that person's memory so that they may remember who they were before they lost their memory, before that identity was stolen. Because the act of suffering amnesia and losing your identity and losing your memory and losing the essence of who you are is traumatic. It's traumatic. That's why they, they stay in the hospital for as long as they can. Huh? Because it's, it's a trauma. The, the identity theft, the racial identity theft, the cultural identity theft, the religious and spiritual identity theft, that the national identity theft that we suffered as a people is tremendously traumatic. Hence the term post-traumatic slavery disorder. Because it is traumatic. Why? Because something was taken from us. Something was stolen from us during that period of time. And nobody, even though we suffered amnesia as a people, and it was by design. And it even caused us to, to, to be distanced from our creator, from our savior, not know our rights. The reason why he's, he's saying, okay, this is enough. I offered salvation to them first and they rejected it. And that's why they suffered. But now the time of the discipline and the chastisement is over and I'm awakening them out of the slumber and I'm allowing them to see who they are, who they really are as a people. No, not because that knowledge of their identity will save them. No, but that knowledge of their identity will build their faith so that they know that they could come back and they too can be saved. It is, it is a love story better than the prodigal son. See, when you are in a prodigal status, a lot of times you lose your identity. You lose, you lose sight of who you really are. You forget that you're a king's kid. You forget who your daddy is because you've been out there doing so much. And the, the weight of your own decisions and the circumstances that you've had to suffer the circumstances that you've suffered as a result of your own decisions can strip you of your memory and strip you of the, of the knowledge that you have rights and that you don't have to sit out there and be in the pig pen. You don't have to not be saved. You don't have to not be delivered. The Most High loves us. He loved us. He loved us so much. He gave us the option to be saved before anybody else on the earth. Everything that's walking the face of this earth was birthed through us. And they don't want us to know that. Because as long as we don't know who we are, as long as we don't know what our rights are, they could treat us any old kind of way. They could continue to colonize us and enslave us and steal from us. And, huh? But once you become, begin to understand and know who you are, they can't get away. The, the gig is up. This is why they erased history. This is why they fought so hard to steal our identity. This is why they play the victim. Mm -hmm. They play the victim. And do a really good job of it too. 
They don't want us to remember that we are kings and priests. They don't want us to remember that we are the chosen people. They don't want us to know that he offered the plan of salvation to us first. They don't want us to remember none of it. Our, that we are royalty. I'm not talking about that, that, that perspective of royalty that we've been having. Mm-mm. I'm talking about royalty that's brave and courageous and powerful and changes systems and people and preserves a nation. They don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that. So that's why they've hidden this knowledge from us. Burned books, divvied up lands, renamed them, changed maps, lied about history, continue to lie about history. Because the minute we begin to find out who we are, the gig is up. And they can no longer pull advantage. They can no longer benefit off of our ignorance. Knowing who we are will make us put down the crack pipes. Knowing who we are will make us not sell drugs to one another or shoot one another. Hmm? Knowing who we are will make us unite so that we can demand reparations here on American soil. <clears throat> Knowing who we are will make us demand that our human rights be protected and enforced. And they don't want that. So no, knowing who we are doesn't save us. No. You still got to become, you still must be born again. The word is the word. You must be born again. But you begin to know that, hey, these people can't keep treating me like this. Hey, these people can't keep doing this to us. And it makes you hold your head up a little bit higher. And that's their worst nightmare. That you arise and recognize that you are true kings and you are true king queens. It's not, you know, the kings and the queens mindset that we've had. It's not anything that, you know, true kings and true queens were very courageous and bold people. They were very powerful and courageous people. They don't want you to know who you are because they don't want you to arise in power. It's their worst nightmare. Because they know once you rise up, it's all over with. And you don't have to do what they do because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hmm? But all you got to do is rise up. in this whole system will shut down. They don't want that because they've benefited from the system for centuries, but it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable. So, embrace the awakening, but don't just wake up, get up. Don't just wake up, get up, arise, and walk in who you are. Don't be afraid, because it's time. It's time, Israel, it's time. <laughs>